What if a handful of string and some beads could save your life? Hey Rough and Tumblers, Father Mitch here. So today we're going to do a little test and we're going to compare the accuracy of Ranger beads versus a popular pedometer app. And on top of all that, I'm going to show you how to use Ranger beads and how to make a set of Ranger beads. What happens if you're lost and your cell phone's dead and you're looking at a paper map and you're trying to figure out how far you've traveled on it. What's your off the grid pedometer? So the traditional way to use the Ranger beads is to count footfalls. And the way you would count your footfalls is every time your left foot hits the ground, then that counts as a stride and you would count those until you got 10. When you've done that 10 times, then you slide one bead. There are nine beads on the long end of the ranger beads. So when you get to where you've done that, you go to the 10th time, then, like an abacus, then you slide them all back, and then you slide one of the large beads. So, for example, when you got to the tent, you'd slide all those back, and then you'd slide one bead over, like so. In that way, this set of ranger beads would cover a five-mile hike. So the way you would do that is you would offload the counting to your visual cortex. That's the only expedient way to do it that I know of. And so what I mean by that is every time your left foot falls, then you count it. One, two, three, four, five, until you get to 10. And then when you get to 10, imagine the number one in the corner of your visual eye, like a, a imaginary, um, uh, menu or pop-up and if you memorize that and you let that sit there then as you count the next set and you imagine the number one when you get to 10 then you up that to two now when you get to 10 10 times 10 is 100 and then you would slide one of the nine beads as you do that that's a tenth of a mile when you get to nine tenths of a mile when you get to the final set again you'd slide all nine back and that's your mile you then slide one of the four beads set up, and that gets you to five miles if you continue that pattern. But let me suggest another way to do this, which is a lot less heavy lifting and allows you to enjoy the scenery and also get your prayers in at the same time. It's approximately 100 words if you say the Our Father and the Hail Mary. And so if you simply say them and you say one word for each footfall of your left foot, by the time you get to having recited them both, then slide one bead on the long chain. And uh, it will come out to be almost exactly a mile. In fact, according to my test today, it comes out to 1.02. And so I'll just show you the view from the feet. So you would do it like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And you would continue in that fashion. When you finish the Our Father, then begin the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And if you continue in that fashion until you've finished both of those prayers, slide one of the beads on the nine set, then you will get to a mile if you do that. 10 times. 
Now, could you use a cell phone app exclusively to track your walked distance and your time? Yeah, you could do that, but then you wouldn't have this whole process memorized and you wouldn't have the tool at the ready and be prepared to use it if the cell phone went dead. In order to have a technique ready, then you need to practice it. In addition to that, you should also remember that doing it the way I've described in a survival situation does something additional, and that is that it makes you feel prepared, and prayers give you hope. Both of those things would be very helpful if you didn't have a cell phone and you needed to walk your way to survival. And would it be sort of easy to just rely on the cell phone app all the time? Sure, you could do that. But the reality is, is that the less you use your mind, the more you lose your mind. And the more energy that you give to the phone and to the internet, then the less energy you give to yourself, to your friends, to your community, to your mind, and to your God. Hey, if you like this video, please browse to heritageartsinc.com, check out our free program, and then maybe make a little donation. Uh, we're a 100% nonprofit, 501c3, federally recognized educational charity. And then also stay tuned and I'll show you how to make your own set of uh, Ranger Beats, uh, just like the ones that you see me using today. Now what we do is it takes three feet of 550 paracord and 13 beads. Begin by trimming the end of the paracord, heating it with your lighter, and then sort of squeezing it until you make a nice needle point so you can get the beads on with no problem. Then thread on all 13 beads. I chose camo beads. Uh, you might want to take a blaze orange cord and uh, brightly colored beads or your favorite sports team colors or something like that. Red, white, and blue doesn't matter. Maybe you're afraid you'll drop them and lose them in the woods if they're uh, green or brown. I personally just like a little variation and uh, I love earth tones. So I made mine um, out of these uh, multicolored earth tone sort of camo shades. Now, uh, once you get all 13 beads onto the paracord, then tie a bowline hitch in one end of the cord. Bowline hitch is a fantastic knot. You should know the classic dozen or so knots that uh, are important in survival. If you don't know those, then you should search this channel elsewhere for those knots. Once you get that, then you can tighten it down. Now, if you don't mind a little bit of a nub hanging out, just leave it, but I'll show you now how to appropriately trim off that little nub, heat it, and then smooth it with a pair of scissors so you don't burn your finger. Uh, I like to make sure I have enough room on the end of that for a little cow hitch. Uh, you can change that, adjust it to fit the size of your hand if you're going to use it the way that I use mine. Your mileage may vary. Now here we get to show you how I trim and neaten up that edge. I'll zoom in. You snip it off close. Heat it with your lighter. And then you take the flat of your scissors and press it down hard and then it causes it to expand and it doesn't and, and adhere a little bit and it doesn't want to come untied. If you'd like, you can actually heat the entire knot a little bit and then pull it tight. It'll never come undone then. But I wouldn't do that until I had it adjusted to fit my hand or the size I need it. Now separate four beads at the top and then tie a simple knot. 
uh, so that you have a separate section for the four beads and then another section for the nine beads. This is basically an abacus, so you want to have space for that. Now, when I just tied that, I tied that a little bit long, so I had to go back and then just a little bit too much space. I know the size of my hand roughly, and I know that I want this to fit across the back of my hand, you know, more or less, so it's not too tight and not too baggy. Um, I want to do the same thing for the nine knots here. Then I'm going to tie a knot there. So now I have two sets of knots, a set of four and a set of nine. See, that's a little long. So I decided to loosen that up a little bit. Pull some of that cord through. You want enough space there so you can separate the four into two groups. And then you want a similar amount of distance there so that you can separate the nine into two groups and keep track of your distance walked. Now, once you have those separated, you've got a bowline hitch in one end. Now it's time to tie a slip knot in the other end. If you've started off with about three feet, this will work out just right. I'm testing it to make sure they're not sliding around too much, and they're not. Sometimes beads can be a little bit baggy. Now, if you look here, you want to get beads that are fairly stiff on the line that don't just flop around. As you can see, I'm doubling it back upon itself, kind of judging the distance. I want about a finger's length of string, of cord, um, to work with. Not quite enough. Let's pull that back out. You get a full finger length, uh, maybe a little more. Good. Now roll that over, wrap it around. Tuck the little end through the loop. Pull that super tight, and then you can go back and do that uh, whole heat trim and apply the scissors if you want to. Again, not super necessary if you like it. Uh, this one had a little bit of a uh, knot on the end where I burn it. It was quite enlarged, and so I felt like it would uh, probably not pass through. Didn't need to be done that way. So as you can see, you have now have a bowline uh, knot tied here, so this will not slide. And then in this end, you have a slip knot that slides. And this gives you some flexibility to use it in any number of different ways. So you do what you like. But my preferred method is to tie, and you can use a, a cow hitch like this to tie this to your backpack or to a keychain, whatever you want. You can do this any way you like, but I like to do mine like this. And then that allows me to put this around my wrist. This goes in my palm. And this goes on the back of my hand so that I can keep track. And this adds the, the skin and the position adds a little bit of friction uh, I've found that if you let the thing just hang from your waist or from your backpack, um, it's better to let it, if you're going to let it hang, to hang like this. They seem to shift less. But if you just hang it like this from something while you're walking, then the beads can definitely shift. Thanks for watching. Take care.
God bless.